can be rated for two basic types of refrigerants. <coughs> I'm going to put the 410A or the higher pressure refrigerants in a category on its own. The 410A gauges are going to have higher uh, pressure readings than ones that are for or, or, uh, the uh, standard refrigerants. Now, when, I'm, when you take a look at these, you'll see that this low pressure gauge, which is the blue one, has a maximum pressure of 250 pounds. Here is 500 pounds, actually readable 300. The high pressure gauge, the red gauge, goes up to 500 pounds on the standard refrigeration set. This one goes up to 800. Now, there's <coughs> gauges come in a lot of different types of configurations. Pass over and take a look at that. Also, look at the different connectors. You have quick connect, whereas those are low loss fittings. You don't lose the refrigerant out when you take the hose off. There's also some ball valves that are used. You can see the ball valves here in the line itself. One thing to make sure that when you're using the ball valves in particular, make sure you don't get the wrong end of the hose. It does not have that little piece in the middle. If you put that on a Schrader fitting and it doesn't have that little piece in the middle, you'll never get a correct reading. It doesn't depress the, the Schrader. <coughs> now, I have an extra hose in my hand, and I want you to compare what's on this hose compared to the other hoses. And the reason being, we always talk about the gauges being rated, but we very seldom ever talk about the hoses. One of those hoses has a working pressure, I think <coughs> it's uh, 500 pounds, I believe. And the other one has a working pressure of 800 pounds. If you're fooling with, or I shouldn't say fooling, if you're dealing with 410A, you want to make sure that you have the hoses that are rated for the 410A, the higher pressure. The 410A has changed a lot of the, the ratings of the tools that we use today. So when you're out there in the field, it's so easy to grab another set and not realize that you may be working with a set that's not rated for them. Be careful on that, okay? The fittings are the same. So, I mean, as far as going up to a unit, one, one uh, of the quarter-inch flare fittings or, or hoses will fit you one, so be careful on that. Make sure you know what you're hooking up to. Now, one thing I've seen that happens with a gauge set, let me ask you this, what needs to be inside of a refrigeration system? I, I, I'll give you a hint, two things. Nothing but oil. And refrigerant, no. nothing else. Okay, if it's got air in it, you got a problem. Air can be removed. Moisture can be removed. You know what can be removed? Particles. If you hook this up on a system, it's going to get oil on it. The refrigerant and the oil flow together. So you're going to get oil on this. If these uh, lines are not parked properly and are allowed to dangle, and I just want to show you what can happen. I don't want anybody on my job doing this because it's a, it may not create a problem at that particular time, but it will later on. I have seen this, folks. The fellow comes in, throws up behind him, and he's walking across the yard. Now you tell me what's going to get in those hoses. Dirt. Dirt. One little grain of sand is all it takes to cause a leak with this, uh, on a strider. A strider fit. So, you know, when you see that, <laughs> that ought to be a, be a clue right there. Of, well, I'm not so sure I want this guy on my job, you know. And I don't want somebody that does that on my job because they're probably going to be long gone by the time you have problems, but you will have problems. <coughs> Now, you know, the way the gauges work is not a mystery. You see this tube right here? 
as this pressure increases in here, it causes this tube to try to straighten out. That tube is connected to some gears, and that's what moves the needle. Now the needle's gone off of here, but I think you can see this a little bit closer. If you just take that and move that, you can see that right there. Ricky, is that called a Borden tube? Is that correct? Borden tube. Mr. Henson back here in the back, he, he's the one that uh, knows all the technical names. I, <laughs> I don't know about that now. <laughs> A lot of names to know, David. Yeah. Okay. Set of gauges. We've talked a lot about that so far. Let's talk a little more about it because they're a very important tool that, that you cannot do without. I always love this one. When do I need an EPA license? When have I got to have that certification? Well, when are you in violation? How do I know if I just hook up the duct work on a system or the electrical on a system, do I have to have an EPA license? No. Okay. What if I have a set of gauges in my service truck? Yes. It's going to be hard to explain why you got a set of gauges in your service truck and you don't have an EPA license because there's no way in the world that you're going to use or should be using those gauges without a uh, EPA certification. Y'all see where I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. And how many times are you going to actually be out there doing duct work, electrical, but not have a set of gauges in your truck? Probably not. So go ahead and get yourself certified as soon as possible. I think that's very important. Okay, I want you to look at the way these are made on the inside. We'll pass that around. You see that these are repairable within limitations. Uh, let me have a set of the gauges back up here, please. Okay. I don't think I can emphasize enough about letting other folks use your tools. You see, the way these gauges are made is if I were to draw a quick diagram of the manifold gauges, have your gauge here, gauge here, port, port, you got one port here, one port here, and port here. Okay, this center port, service port is sometimes called, low pressure port, high pressure port. It does not matter how much you move this, this valve right here, it only stops the flow between the service port and the appropriate uh, either low side or high side port, depending on which you're moving. It does not do anything that, of the pressure that's going up to the gauge. So if I've got this line hooked up to a gauge, I mean this line hooked up to a system, I'm, and I have any pressure in that system, I'm going to read pressure here. If I ask somebody to turn my gauge set off, they're going to be looking at that pressure. And they're going to close this valve. Well, this gauge is not going to move. It's still going to be measuring the pressure that's in this line. So what are they going to do? Twist on it harder, right? It still doesn't move. So what are they going to do? Twist on it even harder. You can run a set of gauges by doing that. You run the seats in there. Sometimes it's repairable, sometimes it's not. What the worst case is, is when you see somebody, I promise you I'm not doing this, I'm looking like I'm doing this. Mm. <laughs> you pretty well say those things are toast. Okay. In this type of field, don't we control a climate within the space? Okay. Hadn't that got a little something to do with weather? Okay. You're going to learn a lot about the characteristics of air in particular. <clears throat> One thing that you'll be using and learning about is a slings lithometer. Now this has a dry bug, which is a regular thermometer, and a wet bug, which is a thermometer with a wet sock on it. 
Okay. Before y'all got here, I put a little water in the reservoir down here so that it would have a little water up here. And in order to read this properly, we take it and we swing it, like so. Now, what can I tell from knowing this? Number one, I can tell you what the temperature is, but I can also tell you what the drive up is. By knowing those two things, I can tell you just about anything you want to know about a, uh, a, a parcel of air. A parcel means a amount of air that has the same characteristics. Okay, it could be a uh, just a, a, a small kin that had air in it, or it could be a small room, or it could be an entire city where the air is pretty much the same, the characteristics the same. In reading so, I find out that my wet bub is 58 and my dry bub is 72. Now this particular swing slicometer has a scale on it that I can go to and tell you what the RH is. 58 and 72. I have kind of a dry day. It's about 45% in here. Want to pass that around take a look at it? <coughs> Preferably we see somewhere around 50%, 50 to 55% in most houses or places where people are. Okay, It's a little bit on the dry side. Not bad, but a little bit on the dry side. You know, we talked about measuring the higher pressures with the gauges, but we also measure pressures in the duct system. And also natural gas pressures or LP gas pressures. Now, those pressures are, are so low that if we hooked up our gauges on them, we couldn't tell what we were doing. So we use tools such as this. This is a magnahelic gauge. Okay measures very small amounts of pressure, measures it in inches of water. I'll pass this around, let you see that. I have another one out here too, I don't know what I've done with it, but that's okay. Uh, some of the places that you may use something such as an incline manometer, would be to measure the pressure in a duct. Okay. Again, we're going to be measuring in inches of water, water column. Okay. Uh, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's uh, more than you would think. If you have a, a uh, one inch of water pressure over a big area, that duct's got to be able to withstand it. I, I, I like to do a demonstration from time to time. <coughs> 